Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Thursday, November the 11th, Remembrance Day. Let's begin with a deep breath and then our opening chant. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in the lives of his saints. O come, let us worship. The Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we remember those who have fallen in battle for their country. We remember all those who serve. We remember all those who have put themselves at risk for the common good. Psalm 27 is so appropriate for the day. It speaks of conflict. It speaks of armies gathering, of war. It speaks of adversaries. It speaks of our need to put our trust in the Lord who is the strength of our life. Let's pray this psalm together, mindful of those who have been in service. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. Though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, to seek God in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head, above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and also those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Let us pray. Faithful God, the shelter of all who hope in you, May those who seek your face be set free from fear and distress and come to see your goodness in the land of the living. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
Our reading for Remembrance Day is taken from Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. This is a depiction of the rejoicing in heaven when finally all of the anti-God forces on the earth are judged and cast down. It has very evocative imagery, a bit disturbing. This um, evil is personified as a great whore, who has corrupted the earth with her fornication. Infidelity and sexual immorality in general has often been used in the Old Testament as a metaphor for those who have abandoned their covenant relationship with God and instead have followed pathways of evil, destruction, oppression, and violence. I wanted to put that in context for us so when we consider the rejoicing in heaven, the rejoicing of all creation, at the vindication of the saints and the judgment of all evil, that we see that evil as all that is destructive of human nature and the beauty of creation, all that mars the beauty of creation, all that saddens the heart of God. Revelations chapter 19. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power to our God, for his judgments are true and just. He has judged the great whore who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they say, Hallelujah! The smoke goes up from her forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who is seated on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and all who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These words are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You've all been to weddings and know that joy of a new fresh start, of, of love lifted up and blessed in the community, the sacrament of God's very own blessing upon the love of two people. Imagine the joy, the culmination of this chapter of human history when evil is fully destroyed and all things begin new again. It will be like a cosmic wedding, of course. The bride in this case is the church of God, of God's people, united to God and to the church, to the righteous of God. The scripture says, to her it has been granted that she would be clothed in fine white linen, and this linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. So you see, the good that we do as individuals, the good that we do as church, are actions that have their beginning in the very heart of God, for to us it has been granted to carry out such deeds of righteousness. We have been given divine direction. We have been given divine permission to work righteous deeds. To us it has been granted. Let us walk in this. Let us have the fabric of our lives have enduring and everlasting significance. Let the fabric of our lives be woven into this beautiful linen with which the church will be clothed in the last day. And we with the great multitude will sing together. Alleluia. To our God belong victory, glory, and power. For right and just are God's judgments 
Praise our God, all you who serve him, you who fear him, great and small. Alleluia, the Lord God Almighty has claimed his kingdom. Let us rejoice and triumph and give him praise. The time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Amen. Let us join our hearts in intercession, responding to the prompt, Lord, with hear us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church, in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Lord, hear us. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. May we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Lord, hear us. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, hear us. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, hear us. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, hear us. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Lord, hear us. Grant us grace to entrust the fallen to your never-failing love which sustain them in this life. Receive them into the arms of your mercy and remember them according to the favor you bear for your people. Lord, hear us. O God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Have a blessed Remembrance Day.